Hi everybody, this is Boaz Faller. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the weekly astrological message for the week between the 8th of April and the 15th of April 2017. First of all, let's talk about the, the next few days. It's, it's very important that we'll be discreet, that we'll be humble, that we'll uh, lower our energies and walk in a slower and much more tranquil pace. Why? because the Sun is opposing Jupiter and this is a time that we can go over the top with what we're trying to achieve. This is a time that we could be extravagant and really we'll get to better conclusions and better outcomes if we'll be humble, if we'll be district, uh, discreet, if we'll be tactful during these next few days and take it slower and, and more minutely than we usually do. Other than that, on the 9th of April, morning time in Europe, still night time in the States, could be intense because the Moon is creating a T-square together with Saturn and opposing uh, Chiron and, um, and Venus. This is a time that we can feel like harmony is not flowing as we want it to flow in our life, like things are not working our way. It could bring up things within our relationships, within our love, within our income, all these Venusian aspects and we could be harsh critics and judges of ourselves and other people in our lives. It's not the way to go. We need to understand that this is an influence that will pass, it's a testing time, it's a time that maybe we could see things more harshly so we could fix things, but be kind. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others around you, don't be a cruel judge on the 9th. This is also a pivotal day because Mercury is going to turn retrograde on the 9th. It's going to be in a retrograde motion until May 4th. And as usual when Mercury goes retrograde our logic, our navigation through life and our communications work differently. Because they work differently they're more subject to uh, miscalculations and to all kinds of setbacks and miscommunications. Knowing that, knowing that, all we have to do is not stop living and breathing, it's just take some extra effort to make sure that everything goes right and goes our way. That means that if you're traveling somewhere and you're going to change airplanes or you're going to change trains, take some more time because you know there could be some, some things that go wrong. And if we're signing something or buying something or selling something, we're going to make sure that all the small print is, is correct. We're going to make sure that every little detail is as it needs to be, not overlooking anything. But we're not stopping to live. On the 20th of April, Mercury is going to move back into Aries from Taurus. This is also the day it's going to conjunct the Sun and be in a state of Kazemi, as the ancients used to call it. This is an important time for us to visualize how we would like our life to be, using that mercurial influence in the heart of the sun. It's a great time to vision and see how we would like our life to look in the future, to look like in the future. On the 20, and of course, because it is, it's in Taurus, conjunct the sun in Taurus, everything that deals with Taurian attributes is heightened. Our body, our assets, everything regarding our income, all of these subjects are things we need to visualize about and see how we like to progress in. On the 28th, Mercury is going to conjunct Uranus. This is a time that we need to pay extra attention, not to be hasteful, not to uh, be too impulsive, because that conjunction to Uranus can make us think outside the box, can make us very quick-minded and very Im uh, uh, innovative and even genius. But it doesn't give us a lot of patience. It doesn't give us a lot of uh, an ability to be settled down and think things clearly. So if we do that, we can take the best from uh, uh, both ends of that influence. Other than that, on the 10th and the 11th, we're having a buildup of energy. We're having a buildup of energy, and it's a great time to enjoy yourself with the company of good people, good drink, 
good food and just celebrate life. The moon is going to conjunct Jupiter on the 10th in, uh, in Libra. It's a beautiful time to enjoy life. And then on the 11th, the moon is going to be full in 21 degrees Libra. And whenever I think about that full moon in Libra, the song that comes to my mind is the greatest thing you'll ever learn is to love and be loved in return. There's a lot about that full moon that talks about the exchange that happens between one soul and the loved people around it. Other than that, there's an, you know, from the 10th onward until the 15th, the sun is going to head into a conjunction with Aries and, uh, and Uranus. This is a time that we could be much more uh, anxious and, and patientless and we want to get ahead in life and we can have a very short fuse. So just be careful and be careful how you state things, how you put things out because that conjuncting to Aries can... Aries is all about putting the uncomfortable truth in front of people. And one of the greatest things that Aries needs to learn is how to be more tactful and diplomatic. So that bitter pill could be chocolate coated and when people around us can swallow it. So even if we're dealing with things that we need to put out on the table and, and, and change within our relationships and within our environments, try and do it as tactfully and as diplomatically as possible. On the 15th, Venus is finally uh, stopping its retrograde movement. It's going to be conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer, and squaring Saturn. This is a time that, uh, first of all, it's been in that point before, on the 24th of January this year. Subjects and all kinds of things that started back then can come back up at this time. But this is a time we need to pay extra attention to our relationships, to love, to income, and really... Um, Try and, 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 and work through that subject more consciously than we ever did before so we don't end up doing the same mistakes all over again. This is about everything for this week. I want to thank you for listening. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and as I said before, I'd love you to be in contact with me and tell me what you think about these forecasts, if they help you, if they don't, what could be better and what could be done in a way that would be more uh, insightful and helpful for all of you. And of course, for consultations, masterclasses, and uh, any kind of uh, private lesson, I'd be very happy if you contact me. I'm Boaz Feiler. May we have a beautiful week. Goodbye.